Jalissa, hi. Can you tell me what's happening there? Yes, I just killed my daughter. How old is your daughter? Three. You have to understand this. What is happening in our country and largely in our world is a divine judgment. I just want you to mark that in your mind. It is a divine judgment. So we are experiencing the judgment of God on our nation. It's not as if we're waiting for it. It's not as if it's nearby. We're in the middle of this judgment. Because when God abandons a nation, the instinct, the strongest human instinct there is, the instinct of women mothering their children is perverted. This is that severe a blow, this level of judgment on human culture and human society. The United States of America, the most prosperous and advanced nation in the world and a quote-unquote Christian country, has the highest rate of child murder among developed nations, according to the National Institute of Health, NIH. This is telling. Please note that this video is more than just informing you about a single parent killing her daughter. Be sure to stick around until the end because we will address critical issues that could potentially impact all of us. So hard to believe. Jalissa Baxter faced a judge this morning just one day after police say she repeatedly stabbed her three-year-old daughter. Jalisa Baxter faced a judge this morning making her first appearance in charges related to the murder of her daughter. She stood there seemingly emotionless. Let's get you to some videos so that you can take a look for yourself. She is facing murder and aggravated child abuse charges only one day after police say she stabbed her three year old killing her. You can see Baxter right here being booked into the Dade County Jail after the gruesome details outlined in arresting documents. They reveal that Baxter attempted to first strangle her daughter. Once she was unsuccessful, she then stabbed the little girl several times. The details of what went down in that North Miami Beach apartment are chilling. Police say when they arrived, they found Jalisa in her white robe with the body of her child nearby and also the weapon used not too far away as well. Now, Baxter's Instagram account is filled with pictures of her and her daughter. She identifies as Aria. She talks about how much she loves her and there are also other posts though that detail battles that she's endured and now she's facing yet another one. Each year about 500 children are killed by their parents and most of these deaths are children six years and under. While most people fail to connect the dots, the more Americans distance themselves from Jesus Christ and embrace godless practices, the more we see violence and moral decadence in our society. It's time for America to return to God, righteousness, love, and truth if we ever want to enjoy God's blessings of peace, joy, and protection. America has been gradually becoming a kingdom with a king, an evil kingdom with an evil king and his evil agents. How did that happen? Turn to Romans chapter 1. And I want to rehearse for you some very important portions of Scripture. Verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Now the wrath of God takes many forms. It's wrath against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So it's a kind of wrath that has to unfold on a society that is suppressing truth. Wherever you have a society suppressing truth, it necessarily then is characterized by ungodliness and unrighteousness. Please help us spread biblical truth. Subscribe and enable the bell icon to be notified when we publish new weekly videos. Like and share our videos. God bless you. Statistics reveal that single parents are more likely to kill their children than married parents. Not to condone or excuse the heinous crime of terminating a child's life, but some single parents, particularly moms who take their children's lives, are overwhelmed by the burden of raising children alone with little to no help from their partners. After giving birth, some moms experience significant mental health problems or postpartum depression. Again, this underscores why God's plan of husband and wife living together and raising their children is the best plan. When one is down, the other person can step in and help. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Proverbs 27, verse 17.
The motive behind this mother who's accused of killing her three year old daughter still a bizarre mystery at this point. Today we're hearing from that mother's stepfather. Neighbors told us off camera that Baxter was somehow going through some tough times. Public records show that the mother was unemployed and received an eviction notice only a few days ago. Now today we did speak to Baxter's stepfather over the phone. He says they only met her once when her mother passed away of cancer in September of last year and he doesn't know why she snapped. She's sick, you know, I just, that's all I can say. She's sick because right now if somebody is going to pick up a knife, you one child. And, she, you know, she didn't seem like a bad mama to me. You know, she seemed like she was a good mother. The, the, the one time I met her, I met her and I met the baby once. God's original plan for the family is to have a male husband and female wife live with and raise their kids in training and admonition of the Lord, according to Ephesians 6, verse 4. Much of the perversion in America today can be attributed to the breakdown of the traditional family, and the breakdown can be traced back to America as a nation rejecting God while at the same time embracing paganism, atheism, self-worship, and other forms of false religions. That's the reprobate mind. So this is judgment. This is judgment. And out of that depraved mind, what are you going to get? Well, you're going to get, verse 29, all kinds of unrighteousness, all kinds of wickedness, all kinds of greed, evil, envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. That's the Greek word kakia, which means generic general evil, gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. So what is that? That's what you see every day on the news. That's just the way people are. That's the way they live. The Bible teaches that marriage is between a man and a woman, and sex should be within the confines of a marriage commitment between husband and wife. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC's 2020 birth data, 40.5% of births in the U.S. are from unmarried women. The idea of not engaging in sexual intercourse until after marriage is mocked and ridiculed by many Hollywood movies and celebrities. We got to start by saying what the hell is going on with T.I. He apparently went on Red Table Talk to walk back his claim that he's been taking his daughter to the doctor uh, yearly for yearly virginity checks since she was 15 years old. Take a look. Yes. I'm being criticized because I'm willing to go above and beyond to protect mine. Right. And I'm talking about all of the little slimy, grimy, chubby-fingered little boys who want to just come and defile mm -hmm. and destroy the sanctity. Right. I think all of this surrounds a conversation that I was having in a very joking manner right. when asked, yeah. how do I yeah. deal with parenting in this day and age? We will address this topic in detail in part three of How Hollywood is Reshaping America. Keep an eye out for that video. Obeying God's commandments brings blessings and protection, and this includes refraining from having sexual relations with someone you are not married to. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Moreover, by them, referring to God's laws, is thy servant warned and in keeping of them there is great reward. Psalm 19, verses 7, 8, and 11. And if you disobeyed God, repent and seek God's forgiveness, then move and not live in guilt. So, first of all, common law marriage, people who are in common law marriage are much more likely to be, be divorced. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, people who live together before they get married are much more likely to be divorced after they get married. So the idea that, well, you can try someone on for size and see how it works, and then you're going to see if you're compatible, it's like, that's one story. Another story is, well, how about you and I live together for a little while, and, you know, if you're, you're not so bad, but maybe I can find someone better, and if I do, you know, in the next year and a half or so, because we're not hooked together in any formal way, I can just trade you in. But I don't really see that as the sort of complementary mutual interaction that leads to the formulation of long-term trust. Fathers play an essential role in the family, both in raising children and serving as role models for their wives and children. According to U.S. Census Bureau, 18.4 million children, one in four or 25 percent, live without a father in the home. Furthermore, the National Fatherhood Initiative reported that a child raised in a father-absent home would experience the following. 
four times greater risk of poverty, more likely to have behavioral problems, two times greater risk of infant mortality, more likely to go to prison, more likely to commit crime, seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teen, more likely to face abuse and neglect, more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, two times more likely to suffer obesity, two times more likely to drop out of school. Besides having both parents involved in raising a child, how can this unfortunate incident of murdering one's child be avoided? Seek help. Don't suffer in silence, and don't be ashamed to let someone know you are struggling or can't cope with raising a child. Also, putting a child up for adoption is another option. Many Christian-based ministries help place kids in wonderful Christian homes. And as she looked at the clock, she says, it just dawned on me, this baby hasn't done anything wrong. Somebody will love this baby and adopt this baby. Eight and a half years ago, she put that baby in our hands. And that was our first adoption. Our next adoption was a 14-year-old victim of incest. And so we have a almost 23-year-old, a 20-year-old, an 8-year-old, a 6-year-old, 5-year-old, 4-year-old, a 3-year-old, a 2-year-old, and a 1-year-old. The number of violent deaths in America is frightening, and we will discuss this in part two of our series on how Hollywood is reshaping America. According to CDC.gov, in the United States, more than seven people per hour die a violent death. And here's the judgment. God gave them over. So how do you know when this wrath is operating? You know when a society turns from God that had the knowledge of God but by creation and Scripture, when they give up on the truth of God and exchange God for a materialistic, secular worldview. That form of social, national, cultural apostasy leads to God giving them up. Make no mistake, no politician, celebrity, or millionaire, no matter how well-intentioned, can save America. America can only experience God's blessings again if she repents and returns to God, because righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Proverbs 14, verse 34. And God promised in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, in the middle of that, you might be saying to yourself, um, I hope the Lord remembers his people in the midst of this. I hope he doesn't get so carried away with judgment that he misses us. And that reminds me of the end of the very last book in the Old Testament, the book of Malachi. This is a word of comfort. And uh, in verse 16 of Malachi 3, we read this, Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. Here we are in the middle of this, talking to each other and saying, what's going to happen? What's going to happen in the future? And that was exactly what the people of Malachi's time were saying, what's going to happen? And the Lord gave attention and heard it. I love this. A book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I prepare my own possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. God has a book, and in that book are the people who belong to him. And none of them are going to get washed up in the judgment. May God protect our families in these dark days. Amen.